to fix it. Have you ever had one of those movies that you were so hyped to see that you can always remember that excitement, even going on a decade later? Well, Speed Racer was that for me. I wanted to see it so badly, despite never having seen any of the source material. I only really knew about Speed Racer from parodies, but the trailers made the movie look so awesome that I wanted to see it regardless. Now, I didn't get to see the movie in theaters, but I begged and pleaded with my parents to rent it on demand the day that it was released there because I wanted to see it so badly, and... Well, let's just say that it wasn't quite what I expected, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. If I'm going to do this, we have to start at the beginning. Speed Racer started out as a Japanese manga created by Tatsuo Yoshida in the 1960s and was originally called Mach Go Go Go. It was about an ambitious young man named Speed Racer who wants to become a professional racer, and had the help of his supporting cast, including his parents, Pops and Mrs. Racer, his younger brother Spritel, Spritel's pet chimpanzee Chim Chim, and his girlfriend Trixie, along with getting help from the brooding Racer X, a masked racer with a secret identity. Side note, I'm using the American names only because those are the names that I know. Obviously, in the Japanese version, his name wasn't Speed Racer, it was Go Mifune, but to me, he's Speed Racer. Plus, you do not want to see me bungle Japanese pronunciations. I have enough issues with words like Kompsognath... Kompsa... Kompsognathus as it is. And in 1967, the manga was adapted into an anime of the same name, and was then dubbed and exported to America, where the name was changed to Speed Racer. It soon became known for the exaggerated speech patterns that the characters had, which was the way that Peter Fernandez, the American producer, compensated to make the voices match the characters' mouths. The anime became wildly popular, with one of the most recognizable theme songs that I think an anime has ever had. I mean, besides Pokemon, at least. So it's no surprise that the movie rights would eventually end up in Hollywood and a film adaptation would be made. What would surprise you is that the movie was in development for over a decade, with Johnny Depp at one point being considered for the title role. Of course, that never happened, thankfully, and the movie eventually ended up in the hands of the Wachowskis, fresh off of V for Vendetta, another adaptation, and produced by Joel Silver, who also went on to produce today's movie. Speed Racer was released in 2008 and is widely considered to be a box office bomb, with a 40% score on Rotten Tomatoes. And I have to agree that it's pretty bad. I knew that it was pretty bad back when I first saw it, and I knew next to nothing about Speed Racer. So I can't imagine that people that actually liked Speed Racer were happy with it. But the question is, despite being a box office bomb, did the movie have potential? Or did it have a flat tire right out of the starting gate? Here it comes. Here comes Speed Racer. Screw you, that was funny. The movie has a similar plot to the source material. It centers around Speed Racer, played by Emile Hirsch, who has wanted to be a racer ever since he was a little kid. And I mean, what the hell do you expect from your kid when you name him Speed Racer? That he's gonna become an accountant? When he was young, he looked up to his older brother Rex, however, Rex and their father Pops, John Goodman, had a falling out, and soon after, Rex was ejected from the racing league and died doing a much dirtier and rougher race. But Speed persisted and now races, though taking care to never break his brother's records out of respect. He has a team made up of Pops, his mother, Mrs. Racer, Susan Sarandon, the mechanic Sparky, Kick Gurry, his girlfriend Trixie, Christina Ricci, his younger brother Spritel, Polly Lit, and Spritel's pet chimpanzee, Chim Chim. He races and is occasionally assisted by the dark, edgy racer, Racer X, who always obscures his face and seems to have taken a liking to Speed for some reason. When Speed refuses to sign with the corrupt auto manufacturer Arnold Royalton, Roger Allum. Royalton tries to destroy Speed's life by paying another racer to destroy the Mach 6 during a big race, and his family by discrediting Pops. The family is prepared to go through it together, but then Speed is approached by Inspector Detector and Racer X, who want to recruit Speed to work with another racer, Teijo Togokan, whose father's company is about to be bought out by Royalton, unless he can win enough races 
drive to drive the stock higher. Pops refuses because the race that they want Speed to run is the one that Rex was killed during, but Speed and Trixie disobey Pops and go anyway, taking Speed's street car, the Mach 5. X's team modifies the car to include all the gadgets from the anime, deployed in the same way, and they get to racing, but by chance, Spritel sees the race on TV and Pops walks in, causing the family to go over and confront Speed. Speed pleads his case, and while Pops disapproves, if this is what Speed wants, his family is behind him 100%. During the night, Speed, X, and Tejo are attacked, with Speed and X fighting off their assailants, ninjas, but Tejo is drugged and can't race until after the drug naturally flushes from his system. They swap out Trixie for Tejo during the race, and after some fancy wheel work from Speed, they win and everything is great. Except that Tejo lied. He wasn't helping to destroy Royalton. He wanted to drive up the stock so his father would profit more from the buyout. Speed is angry and goes to race his feelings out alone, but is confronted by Racer X, who Speed is convinced is actually Rex in disguise, but X takes off his mask and reveals that he's just some guy, not Rex. Tejo's sister, who was not privy to what happened, feels bad, and gives Speed Tejo's invitation to the Grand Prix, which Tejo rejected, but since they were on a team together, Speed is technically entitled to use it to race. Which he does. The team spends a day building a new Mach 6, and Speed races it in the Grand Prix, winning despite all the Grand Prix being fixed all throughout history, and with Royalton's main racer using an illegal device, which Speed exposes. Royalton is indicted, Speed and the racer family are finally vindicated, Speed kisses Trixie, and Inspector Detector asks Racer X if he wants to go down and congratulate the family but he declines. Inspector Detector asks X if he thinks that he made a mistake keeping his identity secret, and through flashbacks it's revealed that Racer X was actually Rex after all, having faked his death and gotten plastic surgery to help expose all the cheaters in racing. The movie ends with Racer X saying that if it was a mistake, it's one that he has to live with. basic premise is the premise of the show, so they didn't change all that much to adapt it for the screen. Speed wants to be the best racer. It's not like Dragon Ball Evolution, where they aged up Goku and set it in high school. This is a pretty near carbon copy of the original anime. And in keeping with that, the movie has a lot of good messages about family and the devotion to the craft of racing. Nothing really revolutionary, but it's rare in fiction to have the go-behind-your-parents-backs to do something, and with the parents actually supporting their kid. Add in the stuff with Speed and Rex, and that part of the story is extremely endearing. And all of the actors are really good, which is what really sells all of the family stuff. No one seems like they phone it in, and everyone has great chemistry. It helps a lot that a lot of the characters are over the top, so no one really has a chance to seem bored. Not even Susan Sarandon or John Goodman. Christina Ricci also does well here. While she doesn't fall into her role quite as well as she fell into Wednesday Addams, she still does a really good Trixie. Though, I want to give special recognition to Emil Hirsch, especially. I read that when he accepted the role, he went and watched every episode of the original anime, and then went to a NASCAR arena to prepare for the role. And while it's not required for actors to watch the source material, since the idea of an adaptation is a unique take on the characters, that's going the extra mile, and something that I think really enhances his performance. He seems to really understand who Speed is and what that means. And the aesthetics of the movie are very faithful to the source. The Mach 5 still has all the gadgets, the Mach 6 doesn't look all that different, and it's not like they completely redesigned the entire aesthetic just because it's a modern retelling of the story. It looks like an anime brought to life. Even despite the darker subject matter, the visuals aren't washed out or anything. Unlike a certain other modern retelling of a classic anime, this one actually remembers that bright colors exist. Man, I am crapping on Dragon Ball Evolution a lot in this video. Note to self, review Dragon Ball Evolution at some point. And the racing scenes are really well done and are definitely where the movie shines. 
In fact, visually, the movie is pretty stunning. Less so the CGI, which I'll get to in the next section, but the shots are done beautifully. The Wachowskis, regardless of what you think of their movies, are artists, and they know what they're doing from a production and cinematography standpoint. Oh, and the music is phenomenal. The music was done by Michael Giacchino, who did the music for The Incredibles, Jurassic World, Rogue One, and also did the music for all three of the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies, which, while I disliked the first two based on plot and characters, I still really enjoyed the music. And the music in this movie is so very faithful to the source material, and it's still a rocking soundtrack, just like the soundtracks to the Star Trek movies. Other than that, yeah, I've got problems. So, let's deal with the elephant in the room first, the whitewashing. It's an anime adaptation cast with mostly white people, except for the characters who double-crossed Speed and X, Tejo and his father. His sister is cool, but that doesn't make up for it. And yeah, I'm a white guy, I'm probably the whitest person in existence, but even I know that whitewashing something with Japanese source material is a crappy move. Ghost in the Shell, Death Note, Dragon Ball Evolution... What do these all have in common? Whitewashed anime movies that are known for being really, really bad. Even if the original characters were drawn in a sort of neutral style, that doesn't immediately default to white. I don't know if it's just me, but when I look at the characters in the original anime, I see them as Japanese. Yes, the characters were Americanized in the dub, but I think that this might have been the way to pave the road for Asian-led anime adaptations where the characters from the source material are pretty blatantly Japanese, like Death Note and Dragon Ball and Ghost in the Shell. What I'm saying is this one came first, and it could have spared us from all those train wrecks. And this is as someone whose only real exposure to anime is Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z. On to major story problems. I think the whole conspiracy angle wasn't very compelling. Maybe you guys feel different, but I wasn't very invested in it. And as a result, I think the Racer X storyline is lacking. I get the idea, I just wasn't very compelled by the story. As for the Razor X stuff, because it was so tied into the corruption, I wasn't very compelled by X's quest to save the sport of racing, or the revelation at the end. This is a movie about racing, yes, but it would have benefited from a simpler story. It didn't need a complex conspiracy, it's Speed Racer. I also think that they missed out a whole lot on Royalton, because they show Royalton's shady dealings with Tejo's father before Speed rejects the deal, so we know something's up with him. But I think it would have been so much more effective if we didn't realize that he was evil until after Speed declines the offer and he suddenly turns. It would have been a huge shock moment. The biggest problem, I think, with the movie is that the movie is two hours and 15 minutes long. Two hours and 15 minutes! This movie does not have to be that long. And this does seem to be a Wachowski thing, because the entire Matrix trilogy and V for Vendetta all have similar running times. Some movies deserve that runtime. Jurassic Park totally deserves that runtime. Forrest Gump also totally deserves to be over two hours long. I'm not even sure that Matrix Revolutions deserves to be that long, let alone Speed Racer. I think that this movie could have been told in 90 minutes, but that's just me. I mean, we have that entire Fixer plot that, as far as I can tell, has nothing to do with the Royalton plot where Tejo is about to be fed to piranhas before X saves him, and then they have the big confrontation on CGI Mountain during the Casa Cristo race, and I'm pretty sure it was him who drugged Tejo and sent the ninjas after them, so it basically introduces a secondary antagonist that has no relation to the main one that they wipe out really easily. I know, a screenwriting principle is that the character has to have wins to balance out the losses, but he's a race car driver. You can do wins without having to introduce pointless subplots. Also, everything is CGI. Like, I don't even know if the actors were actually there, because pretty much every landscape is CGI. Some of it is pretty decent, like the racing, but a lot of it looks goofy as hell. I know it was 2008, but still... And yes, this is a cartoon brought to life, so that's okay. It's just... 
the people look normal, so it's a bunch of people in a crazy cartoon world, and it doesn't really fit. And a minor issue I had was with the weird non-sequitur anime sequences slash Emperor's New Groove style freeze frames with Spritel and Chim Chim. There's only three of them in the entire movie, so it's not like it was really a running gag, but I frankly found it really annoying. Okay, so obviously, cast Asian actors. That should go without saying. In fact, I think that Rain, the guy who played Tejo, would have made a damn good speed racer. Losing the original actors who were a highlight of the movie, especially Emil Hirsch, is a loss, but it's an anime adaptation, so that has to be step one. Next up, the story. Either do a hero's journey or do the plot where Speed has to convince his father to let him race. If the story was an origin story for Speed where we start on Rex's death and he eventually overcomes it with the help of his team and mysterious racer X, then all that backstory and the stuff with X at the end would actually be compelling. I just don't think we needed the conspiracy stuff, though I will accept Royalton still being the main villain. He was really good, provided that they don't make him shady before the big reveal. Have us be utterly floored that he would betray Speed and destroy his life like that. Building on that, I'd cut out the stuff with the Fixer. Tejo can come into the action based on us seeing a scene with Royalton and his dad that we, the audience, misinterpret as Royalton pulling the same thing on him and him relenting, and then at least the double crossing would be an even bigger shock, since it would come out of nowhere because we saw Tejo's motivations. That should cut the movie down to a more manageable 90 minutes. And I'd have the movie be a little lighter in tone, which Speed Racer is, apart from the dark bits with Rex's death, but disjointedly so with the Spritel cutaway bits, which are so gone in my version. Spritel hiding in the trunk and eating candy? That's fine, that's what the character did on the anime. Spritel showing up to give cooties warnings? No. And while I can't exactly say not to make the entire movie CGI, since I don't know how they do the crazy visuals otherwise, at least throw in some practical effects and real sets. No movie should be shot entirely in front of a green screen, because if you're going to do that, you might as well make all the actors CGI too. Other than that. And that was Speed Racer. It has a lot of good in it, but it's muddled with a movie that's way longer than it should be, disjointedness between comedy and drama that feels wrong for this movie, and the thing that's plagued every anime adaptation ever. Coupled in with the fact that everything is CGI, and not all of the CGI looks good, it's a mess. If you want a modern version of Speed Racer with a darker storyline and it was mostly computer generated, try Speed Racer The Next Generation. I admit I only ever saw the first season, but it was really good from what I remember. Though this movie's not quite as bad as other box office bombs. It could have been a lot better. The Wachowskis aren't bad filmmakers. They just like to do big stories, and Speed Racer is just not the place for a big, complex story. At least not the type that the Wachowskis usually tell. Anyway, that's all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more of How to Fix It, you can hit that subscribe button, and if you have any comments or complaints about the video, you can put those in the comment section below. Oh, and if you want to be notified of new uploads, you can hit that bell icon. And if you enjoyed this video, share it with your friends and share it around the internet. And maybe consider supporting the show on Patreon. Don't forget the t-shirts, and don't forget that TeePublic is having a sale this week, running until Sunday, so the shirts are discounted this weekend only. See you next time for a video that I've been planning since October. And the book I'm reviewing? It's got dragons in it.
and is occasionally assisted by the dark edgy racer, Racer X, who always obscures his face and seems to have taken a liking to... Uh, taking a liking.